Now in my previous video, I talked about the theory behind the formation of a TRS. Uh, in today's video, I want to talk about uh, understanding the movement of the TRS in the Northern and the Southern Hemisphere and uh, deciding on the evasive action and how to take the evasive action. What principles should you be using to uh, avoid tropical revolving storms or TRS uh, at sea? All right, so let's get started. Now remember, before you take any kind of action, uh, to avoid the tropical revolving storm, uh, you have to make sure that you are continuously monitoring and carrying out a continuous risk assessment because uh, the TRS is uh, known to be erratic in its movement. So, of course, you can uh, refer to the past or historical movement of TRS in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. But honestly, uh, TRS movements can sometimes be unpredictable. So, you have to make sure that you always have a backup plan. Uh, that you always have a plan B and you are continuously assessing the TRS movement and are ready to take the backup plan or ready to take the backup action to avoid the tropical revolving storm at any cost. Some of the points to ponder to avoid the tropical cyclone firstly is the development and the track history. So you have to make sure that you always uh, understand or follow the formation of the TRS right from the beginning of the formation right when it is maybe a, a low pressure uh, a low pressure that is turning into a tropical cyclone make sure you start monitoring it in the weather report so that you understand uh, how many days has it been since its formation how strong is it what is the kind of movement when is it likely to recurve in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere uh, make sure that you also consider the effect of currents meaning winds so for example if you have warm currents coming in and uh, the warm currents bring warm waters with it so those warm water will further fuel the tropical cyclone because the tropical cyclone as we understood in our last lecture is fueled by warm water it's fueled by thunderstorms it's fueled by uh, the the latent heat which is released due to cloud formation and rainfall so these are some of the uh, things you have to keep in the mind because that will help you to understand whether the tropical cyclone will become stronger or it is likely to uh, decay and die down depending on the effects of the current meeting the winds. Make sure that you also keep into mind the errors uh, that happens in track and intensity forecasts. So they are smaller on westerly tracks and larger on the northeasterly and southeasterly headings. So what this means is that you know that you have a uh, the distance uh, uh, laid out how far you are away from the tropical storm and uh, the intensity of the storm but you must always keep a safety margin to make sure that your ship is always away from the effects of the TRS. Uh, try to keep as much distance as possible. You need to avoid the gale force winds because that will slow down your ship. That will lead to heavy weather. Heavy weather leads to damages. It can put your ship in danger. Ships have been known to break into two and sink. So your job as a master or as a mariner uh, on the ship is to make sure that you navigate the vessel in such a way that you avoid these gale force winds, uh, basically avoiding strong winds uh, and st uh, high sea waves to avoid any kind of damage. You also have to remember the crew experience level because that will come in handy when steering the vessel or when uh, securing the vessel. You also have to take into account the ship characteristics. What is the displacement of the vessel? Is the vessel fully loaded? Is it in light condition? What kind of anti-rolling devices do you have? How strong are your engines? What is the load that the engines are bearing during high waves and strong winds conditions? So sometimes uh, this is a diagram that is used uh, in terms of uh, cargo ship performance uh, in uh, wind or uh, sea conditions. What this basically shows you is the vessel speed in the y axis and what you see on the x axis is the wind uh, and you can see that uh, the waves whether they are following whether they are beam or whether they are head on are also there. So what you have to do is basically select the view fort wind force on the x axis and then uh, mark it to the C whether the C is following whether C is on the beam or whether the C is coming from ahead and then you can get an estimate idea of what your vessel speed will be 
because that will be a percentage of the speed of the vessel when in calm conditions. So you can get an idea of how your vessel will perform in certain wind and sea conditions because if your speed is reduced, uh, you are going slowly and there is a highly likelihood of your sometimes the TRS catching up with you or you going into uh, gale force areas and your ship getting stuck into these areas. So you have to have a good assessment of your ship speed to make sure that you avoid these gale force winds or the TRS altogether or its effects safely without uh, or minimum uh, effects of wind seas on the ship structure. Some of the other things that you have to consider is the TRS path versus your ship's course. Now I have made a separate video on uh, how practically uh, a ship may avoid a TRS. Please watch that video. I'll give you the link to that video in the description section below. But you always have to make sure that you never plan to cross the track or cross the T of a cyclone. Uh, done out of respect for the negative effects that heavy weather places on vessel speed handling. Sudden accelerations in hurricane motion can ultimately place a vessel in conditions not originally expected, thereby resulting in disaster. Adjustments to course and speed in order to remain clear of the danger area in a hurricane are the most prudent navigation decisions a mariner can make in these instances. You have to compare uh, the recent forecast track with forecast tracks from the past 24 hours that can pro prove to be very useful for determining a trend in the forecast motion of a cyclone. For instance, a comparison of forecast tracks issued every six hours over the last 24 hours may show a notice, noticeable shift right or left in the forecast track of a cyclone. This information may provide some indication as to how the forecast and actual track are trending and are tending and provide more guidance in navigation planning for avoidance. Uh, the last item to complete in the at sea risk analysis is comparison of closest point of approach between current and possible evasive motions. Uh, or evasive options over time increases in closest point of approach or CPA between vessel and cyclone based on current navigation decisions should increase the mariner's confidence in current avoidance path. So like I said before, try to keep a maximum distance. This 150 nautical miles that you see on your screen is just a recommendation. I actually advise keeping more than 200, 300 nautical miles. But why I have 150 nautical miles is sometimes uh, going too far away from your original track can lead to delays in the ship's estimated time of arrival or ETAs. Uh, now, especially if you are in liner trade vessels such as container vessels, sometimes it is frowned upon. So as a master, it is your decision. Nobody can tell you a minimum distance. It is your decision. Of course, you have to keep the commercial aspect of the vessel in mind that you have to arrive within the ETA or the range of ETA. But of course, allowance is given. If you can justify that your ship ran into a storm or the effects of a storm, uh, you can of course justify the delay in the ETA. But what I want to say here is that try to keep as much distance as possible from the eye of the storm or rather from the gale force radius so that your ship does not get influenced by the strong winds and the heavy seas which delay your ship. If in port, make sure that uh, your the landfall is perpendicular uh, to the least track forecast error. So you are uh, the, the when the storm is passing over you there is less destruction if approaching from overland or parallel to coast and uh, or you can take an early decision to leave the port altogether some captains or some masters don't like to be in port because then you are not in control but at sea you can uh, use your engines and tend to go away or go and hide behind a land mass so it depends on you as a master what is it that you would like to do and you have to make an assessment. You have to make sure you study the TRS properly so that you can decide on the proper evasive action to be taken. You also have to keep in mind about the storm surges, which refers to high waves that may suddenly come in. Uh, and uh, you know, up, uh, if your ship is moored inside the port, sometimes these storm surges or the high waves, if they come in, the ship's moorings can part. So if you are in deciding to take uh, stay in the port, make sure that you have enough moorings, you put in extra moorings, keep your ship secure because if the TRS is going to pass some anywhere over the port, there will be strong winds and there's always this danger of your vessel getting uh, the moorings broken and come and that is even worse. So your vessel will not be in your control because you will not have any engines and your vessel may drift onto another vessel and further complications can arise. So like I said before, uh, in terms of action, make sure that you continuous, continuously monitor and carry out a risk assessment, uh, whatever action you decide. Review the TRS climatology for the area, the track records, the serum available to you, 
obtain the weather forecast, analysis charts, satellite images, whatever you can uh, get as much data on the TRS as possible. Uh, plot your own ship's current position and your forecast positions in the next 24 or 48 hours and start to plot the danger areas to avoid. I'll show you a couple of techniques that we use at sea to avoid the TRS, but make sure at all times you have a plan A and a plan B, like I said before, because the TRS movement is so erratic, so unpredictable that sometimes you may assume that the uh, TRS is going in one direction, whereas it may not. So always have a plan B in motion for that. You must have sufficient serum available or you may have a land available behind which you can go and hide. Um, so these are some of the strategies we use. All right, so port of refuges are there, uh, islands if available are there. Make sure you work out the closest point of approach for all courses of action based on the latest forecast. So keep as far away as possible and execute the best course of action and then monitor that course of action so that uh, sometimes you may have to uh, change that course of action and use the backup plan available to you. And in terms of action to avoid TRS, firstly you have to determine the bearing of the storm center and estimate the distance as well. So, uh, then determine the semicircle in which the ship is in and then take the action accordingly. So for example, uh, I'll show you some of these things here. Uh, firstly, you have to read the barometer and apply the appropriate corrections for a precision aneroid barometer. This means correction for height above the mean sea level, uh, correcting for the index error and the diurnal variation of pressure as well. Uh, compare the corrected reading with the mean pressure for the time of the year. If the corrected pressure is more than three hectapascals below normal, you should be careful. Uh, beware of such a situation. If it is five hectapascals or more below normal, the vessel is definitely on the outskirts of a TRS. All right, this is showing the same information in a tabular format. Not in tabular format, but a flowchart format. Now here you can see I'm uh, just trying to show you how to estimate the location of the TRS. Now, Although satellite and radio technology can provide detailed information relating to the position and last known speed or velocity for TRS, it is important that you as a master are able to back up the information you may be receiving through direct observations. So by using this approach that I'm going to show you, you should be able to determine the bearing of the storm center and estimate the distance to it. And also determine the semicircle in which the vessel is situated and then plot the probable path of avoiding action. Now the bearing of the storm center from ship can be determined by applying what we know as the bay bellots law. Uh, so according to bay bellots law, uh, the bearing of the storm center will be about 12 points to the right of the wind in the northern hemisphere and left of the wind in the southern hemisphere when the barometric pressure falls by 5 hectopascals. When it has fallen by 10 hectopascals, the center will be about 10 points to the right of the wind in the northern hemisphere and left of the wind in the southern hemisphere. Uh, when the pressure falls uh, more than 20 hectopascals, the center will be about 8 points or 90 degrees to the right of the wind in the northern hemisphere and left of the wind in the south. The distance is difficult to kind of estimate. If the barometric pressure is 5 hectopascals below normal, the TRSI is probably within 200 nautical miles. If the wind is uh, above force 8, it is probably within 100 miles. However, these assumptions can uh, give you inaccurate results and all data sources uh, should be consulted to verify the distance. The path or the anticipated movement of the storm can be full or successive observation of the position of the center some hours before. The semicircle in which the ship is situated depends whether the wind is varying or remaining steady. In the northern hemisphere, if the wind veers, the ship is in the dangerous semicircle. And if it backs, the ship is in the navigable semicircle. However, in the southern hemisphere, if the wind backs, the ship is in the dangerous semicircle. If it veers, the ship is in the navigable semicircle. If the wind remains steady, the ship is or in the path of 
The advanced quadrant of the dangerous semicircle where the TRS may recurve over a vessel is known as a dangerous quadrant. This is also the region of the strongest winds due to the alignment of the forward movement with the wind direction. However, it is important that the ship is hove to when taking observations, particularly if you do not have access to radio positions or warnings. This method used to determine your location relative to a TRS can be misleading if you are overtaking the storm. Now you can see uh, to understand the evasive action. Uh, now uh, in the northern hemisphere, if you are in the dangerous semicircle, you try to place the wind about one to four points on the starboard bow, altering course to starboard as the wind veers. If you are in the navigable semicircle or in the path of the storm, place wind on starboard quarter, altering course to port as the wind backs. In the southern hemisphere, if you are in the dangerous semicircle, place the wind about one to four points on the port bow, altering course to port as the wind backs. If you are in the navigable semicircle or in the path of the storm, place wind on the quarter, altering course to starboard as the wind veers. Although there is no perfect TRS avoidance procedure, current technology allows the position, course and speed of a TRS to be quickly relayed to a ship. Information relating to the predicted position of a TRS is also available for periods of up to 72 hours. Where such information is available, it is possible to plot the location and progress of a storm on a chart with a suitable scale. Provided the ship has a sufficient notice of the storm, avoiding action can be planned and implemented early enough to avoid the ship coming too close to the storm. However, the unpredictability of a TRS must still be taken into account. This requires constant monitoring of position and movement reports as well as the prevailing wind and pressure conditions. Up to four such analyses should be made each day when there is a TRS in the area that a ship expects to be passing through. Constant monitoring of cyclonic potential and continuous risk assessment when used with some fundamental guidelines become the basic tools to minimize the cyclone's impact to vessels at sea or in port. Today, even as our understanding of cyclones increases, there is still much error inherent in forecasting the movement and intensity of these systems. Though the use of a recurring risk analysis, marinas can minimize potential impacts of a cyclone in There are climatolo climatologically favored regions or tracks for a cyclone development movement in the oceans. Now, uh, both are important to vessels at sea or in port in order to begin assessing risk involved during the cyclone season. Now, generally speaking, the smallest errors associated with track forecast occur while a system is moving in a general west to west northwest track in the northern hemisphere, and that is south of the subtropical ridge. Conversely, the largest errors involved in forecast tracks occur during recurvature and beyond as systems first slow, then starting to recurve, then typically accelerate northeast of the recurvature. In terms of avoiding action, make sure to keep the ship well out of the center. If in port, you may be advised to proceed to sea. If going to sea is not possible, anchor in shelter with both anchors having engines on stand. The two systems that we used in avoiding the TRS, the first one is of course the safety sector system. Now use of safety sector sectors, now what you do is uh, basically uh, from the reported center of the storm, uh, you lay off its track and distance and it is expected to progress in the next 24 hours. From the reported center, lay off two lines 40 degree on either side of the track. With the center of the storm as center, an estimated progress in 24 hours as radius, describe an arc to cut the two lines on either side of the track. This will embrace the sector into which the storm center may be expected to move within the next 24 hours. Although it is impossible to say with certainty how a particular storm will behave, the sector does at least provide a margin of safety and it can be reasonably expected that the storm's track will be somewhere inside the sector during the next 24 hours. In taking avoiding action, provided there is sufficient sea room, the mariner would do well to endeavor to get his ship outside the sector as early as possible. If after a few hours the direction of the storm is found to have changed, another sector diagram should be drawn with reference to the new estimated path of the storm and action taken to get out of the sector. Then we have the 1-2-3 rule. Now, 
what is the one two three rule well uh, you have the one to hundred mile error radius for a 24 hour forecast you have a two to 200 mile error radius for 48 hour forecast and you have a three to 300 mile error radius for 72 hour forecast so what you do is you plot the current and forecast tropical cyclone positions taken from the weather warning plot the find the maximum radius of 34 knot winds at the current and each forecast time period of the tropical cyclone up to the 30, 72 hours so for example the radii of 34 knot winds given for the 24 hour forecast position in the latest report could be 34 knots uh, at 175 northeast, 150 southeast, 150 southwest, and 150 northwest. Uh, therefore, the maximum radius of 34 knot winds associated with the tropical cyclone at its 24 hour position would be 175 nautical miles. So, you take the maximum radius possible and then draw the maximum radius. Now, then apply the 1, 2, 3 rule to each of the radii at 24 hours, 48 hours, and 72 hours forecast position. So, remember take the maximum radius of the gale force winds that is available to you. So you could be given a few values uh, in different directions, but take the value with the maximum number and uh, whatever direction it is, but take the value with the maximum uh, number and then draw the radius. Now with each of the radius, draw a further 100 mile circle for the 24 hour prediction, draw a 200 mile circle for the 48 hour prediction and draw a 300 mile circle with the 72 hour prediction. Now this gives you an extra safety margin. And then you draw a circle around the 24, 48 hour and 72 hour forecast positions. This uh, connects a line tangent to each circle. And what you get is basically an area that you should be avoiding in the next 24 to 48 to 72 hours. So what you have done is basically you have taken the area of the 34 knot winds, which is the maximum area of the 34 knot winds and then you've added further distances to it to give it an additional safety margin and all you have to do is make sure that your vessel is clear of this area of this one two three area uh, in the next 24 hours 48 hours and 72 hours so you can predict your position of the ship as well as well as predicting the effect of the trs along with the 24 48 and 72 hour prediction and then keep clear of these sectors and keep your ship safe